It seems that there is a wisdom which stands to be forgotten, that the body is not simply a commodity, that in every ounce of ivory or crushed rhino horn, there is a being that was once alive. Tragically, all that remains is the bones of their mutilated carcasses. It's very, very upsetting when something like this does happen. It was a, a very dark day on, on Amakala when those two rhino were poached. So hopefully with combined efforts um, throughout, we can put a stop to that and start to celebrate wildlife and our animal populations again. Statistically, one rhino is killed every day. For the black rhino, this means that there are 4,240 days left. There are those that, that want to continue to um, rehabilitate, reintroduce rhino and uh, increase their numbers through breeding projects. I, th I think the, the outlook is good, um, but of course, you know, time will tell. The rangers tell me more about conservation efforts to rewild the black rhino called Capella. As we search for Capella, I'm reminded that he's no ordinary solitary black rhino. He seeks human contact aggressively. We're busy moving the tank, wanted to put out one of our other lodges, and we left it out overnight, which was a mistake. So he decided, probably it was a Land Rover, and decided to have fun with it. And he pushed it through the bushes on our left-hand side here, and wedged it in there, and then just carried on mounting it and pushing his horn in. So he has destroyed it. It's quite a, an interesting, scary moment when suddenly you're confronted with a black rhino uh, trotting up to you. <laughs> so that's happened a few times and we've had to run off back to the car and kind of move out of the area as quickly as possible. It could be due to human error that in the past uh, game rangers in particular behaved um, incorrectly when encountering Capella um, in the sense that they taught him to chase vehicles. Um, then there are other conjectures that he's missing a mate and that he's sexually maturing now. Capella's behaviour is a deep concern for the conservationists trying to protect him. They hope that soon he will be able to leave his fenced, isolated region to rejoin the main reserve. In the meantime, Sandra has contacted an animal communicator to try and get some answers in an attempt to help Capella. Obviously we are hoping to have some answers from him to why his uh, behaviour has developed the way it has in the recent past. To find out what would improve his situation from his point of view. You know, is he missing anything? Who really knows? So we, we seek the opinion of, of uh, qualified people in, in various areas from, from the vets to animal communicators to um, the, the people that actually did hand rear them. Uh, we want to tell him that uh, obviously we need him to be a rhino that is truly wild and not too interested in humans anymore. Hopefully this rewilding process is working. If, if we do um, feel that you know, uh, possibly having a mate would resolve some of those issues then maybe that's, that's a way forward. So, of course, it's a costly um, endeavour, mm. but if, if, if we could find a mate for him and um, help him in, in that process of becoming a proper, real, wild rhino again, mm. that, would, that would be ideal. Capella's future as a troubled black rhino is gravely threatened. As a high-risk investment, he is worth more dead than alive. If rhinos are not protected, they stand to exist only as memories, a tragedy wrecked by human greed. I mean, the loss of any species, be it as small as a little insect or butterfly, is a, is a tragedy for, for humankind, because those animals will be lost forever for, for our future generations, and the diversity of what, what nature has created will, will just um, diminish. It will be very sad to lose the rhino.